Hello guys, what is going on? Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I actually wanted to sit down and film like a little bit of a skincare routine. As you guys know, I am still in the process of moving. I'm actually moving in two days. So I'm trying to pack everything up and get organized and get everything out, which is a little bit of a task, which is why there is a lack of videos right now. But as soon as I move, obviously that will change. I was also in London the last couple of days for an event. So it's just been a little bit kind of manic at the moment. A few of you guys have let me know that you would like to see kind of my routine when it comes to skincare and what I put on my skin, what works for me, etc. So I thought I would just kind of just like run through that with you. Um, I don't have all the time in the world, so I feel like this would be a quicker video to put together just so I have something for you guys, but still something that is relevant and informational and something that you guys want to see, hopefully. <laughs> so I currently do have tan on, uh, not on my face, but on like my neck and my hands, etc. I was in London for the NTAs and I went with a brand called Fake Bake and I'm kind of obsessed with it to be honest or I was like two days ago, it's kind of like coming off now. And obviously I like scrub my face every day so it's completely come off my face. But still on my neck. So we're just gonna ignore that. But anyway, if my skincare is something that you guys are interested in, definitely keep watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy. Subscribe to my channel if you want to subscribe to my channel. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay then, so first things first when it comes to my skin, it has been a fucking arduous battle to be honest. Like my skin has never ever been good. I mean when I was like a kid and like a young teenager I guess, but as I grew older it just got like worse and worse. I've never had like really terrible acne prone skin. Like I've never dealt with anything like that serious on my skin. But man, like just trying to understand it has been a fucking task in itself. Because for a long time the second I think that it's like kind of going right and going okay, bitch no. It it fucks me up, it lets me know that it's in charge, and I actually have no control over it or any idea what I'm doing with it. Now, I feel like I have a routine down that is keeping my skin in as much check as I can possibly keep it in. I do still have a lot of redness on my skin. I don't know what to do about that. I don't know how to tackle that, to be honest. It is what it is, but it's not really something that bothers me that much. So it's not particularly something that I'm like dying to find a cure for. I have a little bit of scarring on my chin and up here, just from where I've had like really, really bad kind of brain I mean, I guess acne, but I don't know if I would call it acne. I also have a little bit up here. This one's not too bad. This is more kind of just like redness on my skin. But down here on my chin, which is kind of why I like having a little bit of a beard now, is because it just kind of covers that a little bit. I'll try and throw up a picture right here of what I mean. I used to get like, and I'm not even joking, it was so, so bad. Everything like around my mouth, all up here, down my chin was just so fucking bad. And I got the usual kind of like shitty comments like about STIs and whatever. Just to clarify, I've never had an STI. I just had terrible skin. But that was the worst thing is people were looking at my skin. And obviously, the thing is, is the main problem that, like, I had was around this kind of area. And it was one of those things that, like, came and went. It was there before I started makeup, before I started doing YouTube. And then maybe sometime last year, maybe the year before, it just kind of, like, flared up worse than it, like, ever has, ever. And hopefully I've got a picture up just so you guys can actually see what I mean. But I had no idea how to fix that. I was being told to kind of keep keep it dry and not put any like creams or anything on it but then it was drying out and it was like hurt like my skin was literally cracking and it was hurting me and then some people were telling me to put creams on it just to try and fix it that way but then it was getting like really just like wet essentially like really really overly moist and spreading so I really really didn't know what to do it kind of I mean I want to say it kind of like partially cleared up on its own I feel like my skincare routine did help but I think it was just one of those things that I just had to let kind of run its course mainly now this area is really not too bad. I don't get too many spots anymore, which is really, really cool and something that I thought would never happen. I still get, I think this is actually like a cut on my nose right here. This right here is just like a little teeny tiny blemish. And like I said, this up here is mostly just like essentially just scarring. But to be honest, most of all, like the dots on my face is just this kind of redness. And again, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't bother me too much. I don't really care. Everything else, like I have a few freckles, which is mainly what's on my nose. But I think all in all at the moment, like touch wood, I am really, really happy with my skin. So I'm sure you guys are like, shut the fuck up, Jack, and tell us what it is you do. So I will do that right now. First thing I do, obviously, with my skin every morning and every night is cleanse. I use the Kiehl's Cucumber Herbal Conditioning Cleanser. I fucking love this stuff so much. I've been through three of these now. When I actually went into a Kiehl's one time and they told me it was being discontinued, I nearly had a heart attack. But then I went to a different Kiehl's and they said that it wasn't. So I was A, confused, and B, really fucking relieved. Because this is honestly, like, I've used a lot of cleansers. This is probably the best one I've ever used. No, this is. I'm saying it as a fact. This is the best cleanser I have ever tried for myself. So like I said, this is the Cucumber Herbal Conditioning Cleanser with Cucumber Extract for all skin types, particularly dry or sensitive skin, which is me to a T. 
tea. I have very dry skin. Not very dry, just like, just dry. Just quite dry. I can already see like my nose and all around here. Just dry, girl. And then I use the Foreo Luna Mini 2. Just to clarify, this is not like nothing I'm saying is sponsored. I just want to let you guys know. I did actually work with Foreo a year or two ago on this. I haven't worked with them in a very, very long time now. But I have used this since I first worked with them. I genuinely think this is one of the things that has helped my skin the most. And I don't know if it's just like all branded tools that are kind of like this. This is the only one I've tried that kind of has like this sonic, like vibrating, pulsating kind of action. I mean, it, it, it could be literally like every brand that brings out one of these but this is just the one that i've used and i know works for me i actually have two of these i got a black one and a blue one but i kind of prefer the blue so using this with this i really really do think that that's like the biggest thing that's helped my skin so i do this in the morning when i wake up and in the night just before i go to bed obviously this is not something i've done like every single day i try and do it every single day like sometimes i'm like hangover <laughs> and just like being lazy but i pretty much use this all the time and uh yeah i think this is great i really love it and the cleanser especially if you do have dry skin is something I very very highly recommend. It also smells really great so that's a plus. I try to cut out of my routine everything that has alcohol. There's one thing that has alcohol denet or denant or whatever the fuck it is. I don't know what that means. But alcohol is very, very drying. Like my mouthwash that I use is alcohol free just because I don't want any alcohol like in or around my mouth. Obviously because a lot of the dryness is around my mouth. So I tried my best to cut alcohol products or products with alcohol in them out of my routine. And like I said, I've done it for the most part. There is one that does have whatever I just said in it. But um, I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. So the moisturizer I have been using for months and months and months is the Glam Glow Water Burst Moisturizer. I've been through three of these now and these are, the, I'm showing you products that I've been through multiples of. I think showing someone a skincare routine after like a week or two is, is absolutely pointless. I think a month minimum just so your skin has time to kind of react to what's going on. I would say a month minimum is when you, when someone should show someone else their skincare routine. So if someone's like, I've been using this for eight days, this is like there's literally no point in listening to them. So like I said, I've been using this for months. I've been through three of them. It's literally the best moisturizer I've ever tried, bar one, which I'll get to in a minute. This is where I am with this one at the moment. I have stopped using it temporarily. I don't know if I'm gonna go back to it, but there's been one that's kind of overtaken it and it's the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. I've been using this for a month. <laughs> and at the moment, obviously I haven't been using it for like a very extended period of time, but at the moment, it's kind of beating the Glam Glow one. The Glam Glow one, like the name suggests is a water-based moisturizer so it's almost like a really thin gel that when you kind of like rub it into the skin almost just starts to feel like a water the kiehl's ultra facial cream is literally a cream it's not a thick cream it's a rather thin cream i don't even know if that kind of you can see that but it's not say as thick as like the la mer or the charlotte tilbury creams it's still a relatively thin cream which i think is a formula that just works really really well for my skin personally so like i said i have been using this for a month i think i started using it on like boxing day or maybe the day after after. And this at the moment is what I'm going to continue to use for as long as possible at the moment. Like I haven't kind of got anything in mind that would make me not use it. <laughs> the Glam Glow one is really, really good. I just slightly prefer like the thicker, more cream-like formula of the Kiehl's one. For some reason, and I don't know if this is true or has any fact behind it, I just find the cream formula, like the thicker formula, just a little bit more moisturizing or like it lasts on the skin a little bit longer. Maybe because it is a thicker formula, it needs more time to like sink into the skin or something. I don't know. This one at the moment is just like bomb for me. So typically before I do moisturizer, I will apply this product and this is the Kiehl's Iris Extract Activating Treatment Essence. Now essentially what I believe this does is almost like something that's like anti-aging and rectifies skin texture and almost kind of like fine. I'll just read it. I don't know why I'm sat here trying to fucking explain. Okay. So like I said, this is the Iris Extract. It has Iris Florentina Extract to reactivate what? To reactivate skin's youthful look for smoother, radiant skin. It's a unique liquid concentrate, absorbs rapid- Oh, that's what it does. Okay, so the reason I use this before moisturizer is this is designed to let products that go on top of it sink into the skin quicker, which for some reason apparently is better. The extract, whatever, blah, 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 blah. It's blended with a bunch of stuff that is tested to visibly improve the appearance of fine lines, dullness, and rough texture over time. So because I am a man, because I'm a 23-year-old man, I do have, like, male skin. 
which is just naturally more textured than female skin. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. So I use this to kind of combat that, but like I said, I will use it before my other products just to like let them soak into my skin better. But mainly I use this to combat the texture that I have, which isn't a lot. I'm actually quite lucky. I don't know if it's like jeans. My skin isn't like as rough as maybe it should be. As you can see, I've been through like this much, maybe like just over a third, nearly half. So I've been through about half of this. I've been using this for a very long time. You literally need a couple of drops. So I'm going to take four or five drops and that's literally all you need. So you can kind of just see how much I've used it. I just kind of like to like press it into my hands and then press it onto my skin. And then I'll just go in and kind of like lightly massage slash press into my skin. And I pretty much take this everywhere, including like my chin and neck. I think a lot of people forget that the neck ages just as much as the face does. So in like 30, 40 years, you may have like a really youthful face, but your neck is like touching your chest. <laughs> you need to take care of the neck. So then I'll go in with my Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream and I'll take like a decent amount of it. Like I said, I do have drier skin, so like moisturizing is obviously the best thing. And this I'll just take on my fingers and just kind of like massage it into my skin. I avoid like my direct and dry area just because a lot of products tend to like travel up to the eyes. But I'll kind of like put it around and on my brow bone just so like my eyes, um, like my eye area is moisturized. But so it's not like traveling into my eyes. The really, really nice thing about this cream is that it's still very lightweight. So even though it's a thicker formula than the Glam Glow one, it's still not heavy on my skin like at all. And again, like I said, everything I put on my face, I put on my neck and my ears just because you can't forget the ears either. So with the iris extract, I typically use this maybe like once every two days. Even though it is paraben free and oil free, which is obviously great, it still has that like weird alcohol ingredient in it. Alcohol denat. I, li I honestly don't even know what it means, but it says alcohol. So that kind of like I don't know. But the reason I still use it is because I really, really like what it does to my skin. Just because with this product, I can see a noticeable difference, especially when I first ever started using this, which was the beginning of last year, the end of the year before. Because I've been using this before I moved out, and that was a year ago. So I've been using this for over a year. So I typically try and use it once a day, once every couple of days, sometimes even less, just if I feel my skin is like a little bit more dry than usual. Just I don't want to throw alcohol onto dry skin. And then for my lips, I literally just go in with this Nivea... <laughs> Wow, fucking rude. I <laughs> go in with the original lip butter from Nivea. I've tried a whole fucking host of lip products just because obviously my lips for a long time was my main problem area. Literally just take a teeny tiny bit. This is probably the only thing that works for me when it comes to lip balms. And I say that with absolute confidence. Typically, I put a lot on and just like really hydrate them. So obviously after I do my skin, I'm not like rushing straight out the door. If I am going somewhere, I still gotta like get ready and get dressed and whatever. Or I'm doing my skin routine and going to bed. So by putting like a whole load of lip balm on. I'm just ensuring there's enough on there just to keep them moisturized for a long time. And then I'll top up throughout the day. I, <laughs> I go through these so quickly. Just because I put lip balm on constantly throughout the day, which isn't a bad thing. It's literally just moisturizing your lips. So so probably I think the very last thing I do is I take the Mario Badescu Rose Water Spray. This is the facial spray with aloe herbs and rose water. Mario Badescu has a couple of these facial sprays. This is just my favorite one, as you can probably tell. So these are empties I've kept just to show you guys how much I use this. So these three are the aloe herbs and rose water, and this one is the cucumber and green tea. I did go through this and I did like it. I just much prefer the rose water one. This is literally all I have left of this bottle as well. I have to get a new one immediately. There are also more than this. These are just like recent ones, probably since I moved in that I've gone through. Obviously, because I wouldn't have brought like empty bottles with me when I moved. So this is probably what I've gone through in a year, plus maybe like another two. This just adds for me like that extra extra layer of hydration and especially if I'm going somewhere this seems to last on my skin all day and it gives my skin like a really really nice like dewiness like a really beautiful glow to be honest but it also keeps my skin feeling hydrated which is something I really really value especially like if I've got like a really busy day I'm not going to be sat there moisturizing all fucking day so having something like this which just keeps hydration going on my skin is really really great and honestly one of my like favorite skincare products I have ever ever used. I guess you can also use this as like a primer before makeup or a setting spray after. I have a couple of times. I typically only use this in my skincare routine right now. So I just take about five or six sprays of that all over my face. Nothing crazy. And then one thing I use in the night is the Kiehl's Butter Mask for lips. So this is a butter mask. This looks like this. I've been using this for about a month as well. So this is an overnight lip treatment with coconut oil and wild mango butter. So because this is an overnight thing, I obviously use it in the nighttime. 
So I'll put a balm on my lips like maybe an hourish before I'm planning to go to bed just so there is some moisture on my skin and then I will take this, put like a layer over the top and this will just lock in the moisture all night and I'll wake up and my lips will still like be moisturized. I absolutely freaking love this stuff, especially like I said, just because for a very long time my lips were like a major problem area for me. So for that, I fucking am in love with this recently. Honestly, when it comes to brands, Kiehl's is probably the brand that I'd say most of the stuff I've tried works for me. And if you are one of those people that just want like one brand, like one concise answer, when it comes to like which brand do I personally think is the best, and that for me would be Kiehl's because the four major products in my skincare routine are from Kiehl's. Also, I'd say Mario Badescu for me. Like there's not a ton of brands I use and there's not a ton of brands I trust. Oh, another thing I use sometimes, and this is like honestly sometimes, is the Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Concentrate. Now I saw Rady using this on her, or she posted a video on it on her Instagram and it worked fucking wonders for her skin. So I was like, oh my God, I had to check it out. I've gone through about half. I don't know if you can see that right there. I was using this religiously for months and it really did help my skin so much. Now I only use it if I feel like my skin is really either like about to break out majorly or has broken out majorly. I'll just pop a few drops of this oil on my face overnight for a few days, maybe a week, and it will tend to just like go back to normal and kind of like settle my skin. So this I only use like really, but for a while I was using this so, so much. When it comes to like exfoliators and masks, I use the Sand and Sky. This is the Australian Pink Clay Flash Perfection Exfoliating Treatment. This does mattify and invigorate. I don't like that it's more of like a mattifying product. Obviously it's like a drying clay product, so it's going to be, but this is like a very mild exfoliator. It's not too harsh on the skin. I've also got like the little mitt that it comes with, so I'll just use that. I use this maybe like twice a week, if I remember, but obviously this is not something that's like extreme in my skincare routine, I guess. But I will typically use this on like a Sunday and a Wednesday. Or if my skin is just feeling a little bit too clogged or a little just like too kind of ugh, then I'll go in and use this. I also really like the actual sun, like the one everyone talks about. Sun and Sky is another one of those brands that I have worked with before. Obviously this video is not sponsored, but having tried the products, I have found that they are ones that I really do like. The clay mask in particular is one of those things that just works so instantly. It's one of the only masks I have ever, ever tried that has instant results, which is something I really value and it's kind of visually something that is like nice to see. As you can see like instantly that your pores have been minimized, your skin looks a little bit smoother. And it's the same with this, like it just makes my skin look nice. In the way of other masks, there's not like a ton of stuff I use. I'll sometimes use like a Neutrogena like hydrating mask. But again, that's very rare. I just feel like my skin doesn't necessarily need it all the time. And I don't want to put stuff onto my skin just for the sake of it. Cause then I feel like that's when everything just gets like a little bit too busy and crazy. And obviously like a total disclaimer, I don't know if the skincare routine is right. I don't know if what I'm doing is right, but it just seems to work for my skin and it's giving me the results that I at the moment want or that I think I can like possibly achieve with just like the way my skin is. So if you try something different or if you feel like it shouldn't be this way, I mean, you obviously are welcome to your opinion and you're free to let me know, but this is like personally just what works for me and what I like doing and the products that I like using. When it comes to taking my makeup off, I will use the Clinique Take the Day Off Balm. This is another one that I've been using for so long now. I think probably like two years, maybe three years. I've been through a fair few of these. <laughs> I don't actually even know how many. This product I really, really like. It breaks down all of the makeup like in seconds. So I'll just take like a dollop of it, rub it all over, and then just like leave it sit for, mm, like two minutes. And then I don't actually have any with me right now just because I used my last one in London and I haven't been able to get more. But for makeup wipes, I do use makeup wipes, but I only use the Neutrogena, I don't even know what they're called, like the blue, the light blue, like Neutrogena wipes. So I'll pop this on, take a makeup wipe and just kind of like wipe it all off. They are literally the only wipes that I found. And like that's another product I've been using for a very, very long time now. They're the only wipes I found that aren't like harsh on my skin and make my skin feel like it's fucking being peeled off. Because I'd say like 99% of other makeup wipes do that. And that is, uh, that's not what I want. I don't want to fucking take the top layer of my skin off. Like I've just done a fucking peel. Or if I feel like I don't want to use a wipe, I'll take some micellar cleansing water. Obviously this is like the big one. I've been through fucking like 10 of these. Just on a cotton pad, I'll use some of this and just kind of like get into my eyes a little bit more. Make sure everything's like fully clear. This is always like the first thing I'll go in with and then I'll either go in with a wipe or this on a cotton pad. Or maybe both, just because like I'll do the wipe and I'll only use one wipe just because there's no need to use fucking anymore. But I'll use one wipe just to like get everything off, including the balm. And then I'll go in with this and then I'll obviously like start my skincare routine, wash my face and whatever. And um, that's like pretty much all I do. Like I said, I don't know if that's right. I don't know if these products are right for me. 
they just seem to be working at the moment. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's my skincare routine. Like I said, I have had a problematic skin for a long time and I finally feel like now it's kind of under control and I'm not absolutely hating my skin. In the way of like smile lines and wrinkles and stuff like that, I typically just, I don't, I'm not very expressive. Like I don't move my face that much. I guess even when I laugh, I like, I don't typically move my forehead a lot. I do the occasional like, but like even that, it is not causing any kind of like creasing or lines in my forehead. If I smile, if I laugh, I won't do it to the extent where like the whole area is creasing. Just kind of, I like wrinkles and fine lines are something I'm really, really worried about. Uh, so I, I just, I try not to be too expressive. I mean, I'm not anyway, I'm just naturally not like a very overly expressive person, which I guess kind of really helps. Uh, I do want to get like a teeny tiny bit of Botox in here. Apparently Botox helps with headaches as well, which <laughs> will be a fucking miracle. I've never had Botox before. I've never actually had had anything in my face. Oh no, I had my lips. I had my lips done two years ago, once, and uh, I don't know, maybe I'd do it again, maybe. Like in the way of injections and stuff, I literally have nothing in my face. So I kind of take care of it and be on kind of like anti-wrinkle watch just by, you know, chilling out a bit and not being crazy with my face. Also when I apply products, I try not to like tug around my eyes. But kind of like my jaw area on my forehead doesn't like, it's not too like important. I mean, it, it is still important, but because obviously this area is like bone and obviously like your nose and your forehead is bone and cartilage. It's not like a really soft area where it's like all under here where your fat pads sit all around your eyes where your skin is like 70% thinner than the rest of your face. I try not to like pull anything or tug just cause that can really, really damage the skin. So I think as well as like having actual skincare products, it's really about how you apply them as well. Just because you can you can age your skin a lot more than you think you can just by like how you apply stuff. And another thing is I drink a fuck ton more water now than I used to. Compared, it's a lot. Which I think like keeping hydrated is one of the best things you can do for yourself. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything. That is that is probably everything. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and useful if you have like similar skin to me, which a lot of you guys actually tell me that you do have, which is nice we can kind of like be dry together, I don't know. If you enjoyed today's video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up for me, subscribe to my channel, if you want to switch to my channel. Definitely let me know your guys' routines down in the comments. I would love to hear what products you use. Maybe if there's any you can like recommend for me or recommend like a different way, and maybe I'll uh, give it a go. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and I will hopefully see you in my next video, which <laughs> should be a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna try and film, pre-film a few videos tomorrow and tonight, just because then I am actually like physically moving. And then I've got to set up my new setup in my new house and then I'll be able to film again. So it's a little bit of like a bear with me kind of moment, which I'm hoping you guys will, but I'm sure I will be back very, 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 very soon. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I love you and I'll hopefully see you in my next one. Bye guys.